today's session, today we will be talking about the lunar erosional landforms. In the previous class, we have already talked about the various river processes, the stream orders. Now to start with the erosional landforms, we will start with the first basic landform that is the formation of valleys. So when the river flows through, so in this diagram as you can see, there is a river that is coming in. Here is a set of uh, plain that is there. Now when the river is crossing this plain, it kind of erodes the surfaces across the plain. And this process is known as corrosion, as we have already talked about in the previous session. We call it corrosion or abrasion. Now what happens is, during monsoon season or the seasons of heavy rainfall, the input in this river increases. So rather than cutting on to the horizontal side, it cuts on vertical and deeper. So the river flows through this cut. And as the river flows here with more of water coming in, more of uh, drainage sweeping into, it gets or cuts the river, uh, cuts the region around it deeper and deeper and forms a kind of valley. Since it's a kind of river that is passing through, it forms a V-shaped valley. We'll study more in the section on glacial landforms where we'll see that due to the glacial movement, the river or the region that cuts up is in U-shape. So U-shaped valley is a feature of glacial landforms or glacial erosion. So here, as the river goes through, you have the V-shaped valley that is formed. We already understood how this valley formation takes place. Now, in specific regions, when this valley cutting, uh, this river that flows through cuts the region deeper and deeper, it forms a kind of gorge. And finally, when it goes much steeper and deep, it is known as canyon. A best example is Grand Canyon in the United States. So these are some of the examples of uh, these are some of the demonstrations how V-shaped valley converts into a kind of gorge or a canyon. So here you can see in this picture, this is an example of a V-shaped valley. So you have mountains on both sides and you have a stream that is passing through in between, cutting the region into a kind of V-shaped valley. Now when this V-shaped valley gets deeper and deeper, it form, kinds of forms a gorge and this again, when it goes much further deep, it forms a canyon. Now these were some of the very fundamental features or erosional features of fluvial action. Now let's move on to the much interesting feature which is the waterfall. Now in case of waterfall, what happens is, usually the rocks that are arranged are in an alternate fashion. So you have a hard rock and a soft rock. Those are alternately arranged. So you have a layer of hard rock followed by a layer of soft rock. Example of hard rock can be basalt. An example of soft rock can be sandstone. So what happens is, the rock which is soft, as you can see in this animation, gets cut or is kind of erodes away at a much faster pace as compared to the hard rock above. And this hard rock, as you can see, remains there and finally it tumbles off. So this, this soft rock gets eroded and this hard rock falls off and gets off deposited here. So in this animation you can see how the hard rock on the top side and you can see the soft rock here. When the water falls through this, it forms a kind of basin on the lower side. If it is a small, we can say it is a kind of pothole. But when this becomes deeper and deeper, we call it as plunge pool. So that's the most common terminology that we use in case of waterfall. So whenever there is a waterfall, you will have an accumulation of water usually on the lower side where the water kinds of uh, drains off. And this region would be known as the plunge pool region. Now waterfalls can be of various types. I will be covering just few important waterfalls here. 
the remaining list of waterfalls and the types you can refer from the poster course series that we provide. So now the most important waterfalls are first the cascade waterfalls. Cascades are a series of small waterfalls that kind of you have the waterfall in here and then kind of stepward movement of the water that flows. So you have a series of waterfall which is known as cascade. That's the first and the foremost that we have talked about. Now, then the most important is cataract. That's a kind of huge waterfall or a very steeper waterfall. Then you have that's a kind of uh, waterfall which is formed by vertical uh, erosion and it basically goes out from a very narrow inlet. So it's a very narrow path from where the waterfall starts okay. and then there is a kind of waterfall here. Then you have horse tail. As from the name it's clear, it kind of leaves behind a tail or a trail of water. So what happens is, in the case of plunge pool, as you can see, the water falls directly or vertically down into the pool. But in case of horse tail, it remains in contact with the surface or the hard rock and it goes through the hard rock. So it's kind of trails behind from the bedrock and then falls down. So that's known as the horse tail. Then you have the next which is plunge. As you can see, it directly falls into the plunge pool. We have two common kind of uh, waterfalls. We call it as twin waterfall and parallel waterfalls. Now what's the difference between twin and parallel waterfalls? In parallel waterfalls, there are two waterfalls which occur side by side and they are similar. So they are side by side. You have two waterfalls and they are exactly similar. Why? In case of twin waterfall, what happens is there are two waterfalls again. So you have two waterfalls that occur side by side, but they are not similar. So that's the major difference between twin waterfall and parallel waterfalls. We have a list of uh, other waterfalls as, we, as I mentioned previously, which you can refer from the poster course itself. The next is the interlocking spurs. Now what is an interlocking spur? You have a series of mountains, okay, and the river kind of forms protrusions and kind to uh, try to move in the direction of the hills. So you have one hill that is crossing this way, another spur that is going this way. So what would happen is the river will have to follow this path. Now this is you can say it is a kind of similar to meandering river, but this is not exactly meandering river. The reason being meanders are an erosional depositional platform that means you have both erosion and deposition in case of meanders. But in case of interlocking spurs, you have just the erosional features that you can see. So these are the interlocking spurs, okay, and finally. It kind of moves between the mountains. Now next is, this is an example of a structural bench. So what happens is, you have an alternate arrangement for hard rock and soft rock. So you have kind of sandstone which is a soft rock. And then you have a soft rock, hard rock, soft rock, hard rock arrangement. So you have hard rock, then soft rock. So what happens is, it's kind of Erosion cutting that takes place in this manner and kind of forms the benches. So this feature is known as the structural bench. Another important feature that we would be talking about is known as rapids. And the rapids what happen is when the river is flowing, below the river you might have features which have kind of hard protrusions or small hard rocks that can be seen. So when the water is flowing, rather than flowing into a normal fashion or a parallel fashion, it would kind of have a leapfrog pattern across the hard rock sections. So this is known as the rapids. Then you have 
particles which are small depletions where there is a water, uh, water accumulation. You have plunge pools that we have already talked about. Now the next important topic here we will be discussing is a meander. As I previously mentioned, meander is an example of a erosional depositional landform. That means you will have both erosion and deposition that would be taking place simultaneously. Now let's understand how does this happen. So this is a kind of meandering river that forms. The most important thing to understand here is the meandering river has a helicoidal flow. That means it's a kind of corkscrew flow. So you have a flow that is faster towards the edges and towards the inner side you will have a kind of smaller flow or lesser flow. So what happens basically is, as you can see, the bigger arrow denotes the faster or a higher movement. So you have a bigger arrow here and a smaller arrow here. And as you can see, a bigger arrow here and a smaller arrow here. So this is something similar to, we can see the cars moving on a highway. So if there is a turn, the car which is on the outermost track would move at the faster speed. Similarly, the water here which is towards the outermost side which will move at a faster pace as compared to those on the inner side. As a result, the outer side you would have erosion and towards the inner side you would have deposition. Slowly and gradually what would happen is this curve would kind of get deeper and deeper and slowly would kind of cut off. So you can say you will have a river going here and a sky like uh, and a kind of bow shaped left behind which is known as the Oxbow Lake. This lake is known as the Oxbow Lake. Now the lake is already separated due to the depositions which have taken place here. But what would happen here, an interesting thing to note here is, this Oxbow Lake would have no inflow of water. So this Oxbow Lake would have no inflow. And the only thing that can happen is evaporation, so water moving out, going, evaporating. So there is no inflow and evaporation. As a result, this Oxbow Lake cannot last for long. So the water in the Oxbow Lake would kind of evaporate and it might leave behind a meander scar. So what is left behind is known as a meander scar. Now, as you can see here, there are three arrows that depict the velocity of the stream. So the innermost arrow which is the smallest shows the slowest velocity and the outermost shows the fastest velocity. As a result, you will have erosion on this side and you will have deposition here. The side which has the slowest velocity would be the side of point one and the side which has the fastest velocity you would have erosional features there. As a result, this would be the cut bar. Now what would happen if I try to take a cross section of this meandering river? I can see that the side which is having the erosional landforms would be cut, cut, would have a much deeper cut as compared to the depositional side. So if I take a cross section, I can say this would be the feature. The side which is having erosion which would, would be much deeper as compared to the side where you are having deposition. This, this side would be much shallower or shallow in nature. So if I try to take a cross section, you can see this is the side which is having erosion, which is, which is much more deeper as compared to the shallow side, which is having depositional features. Okay. So this is a kind of cross section called the meandering river. Now meandering rivers can be of various types, I think I will be talking about just a few important terms in meandering. So first is a normal meander that occurs by lateral erosion. The 
reaches the incised meander that occurs due to the process of rejuvenation. So it's a kind of vertical erosion. As we have seen in the meandering river, you have erosion on one side and deposition on the other side. So this would be a classic example of an erosional depositional and from that means it is occurring due to the, both the processes that is erosion and deposition of the running water. Now there are some other uh, meandering processes also. Uh, we call it the hostile meanders or the oxbow lake meanders. You can refer those kinds of meanders in the, uh, in the coastal course itself. Now we will be moving on to the next topic that is the pools and the riffles. Now what is the difference between the pool and the riffle? So you have pools and riffles. Now pools are something which are deeper. So you have deeper water in the pools and in the riffles you have shallow waters. So it's a kind of another landform that is formed. The other landform is a kind of when the water is draining into the ocean, it can at the end the course of the water slows down. So it can either form a delta or it can directly empty into the main ocean as a kind of estuary. So you have estuaries, then you have Cuseta. Cuseta is a kind of landform where you have one side which is much more steep. And the other side, which is kind of having a gentle embankment or a gentle slope. So it usually have 40 to 45 degrees dip slope. It's another uh, landform features that we talk under the erosional features of a moving river or flowing river. Now the most important here is terraces. Now terraces are formed on the region of former floodplains. So again, terrace would be a kind of erosional depositional landform. So there are various kind of terraces. I will be talking about few important ones. The first is a paired terrace. Now what is a paired terrace? If you have a river flowing here, I have a river flowing here. Okay. Across that river, I have the floodplain region. And I have a kind of structure that is similar on both sides. So you have one step here and one step here and another step and another step. So what is happening here is, this is T1 and T1, this is T2 and T2. So T1 and T2 are similar and T2 and T2 in both the cases are similar. So what happens is, this is a case of pair terrace. So terraces are formed in kind of pair on both the sides. If they are not formed in pair, it could be a kind of unpaired terrace. Then you have pill terrace. Pill terrace is a terrace where you have an existing alluvium deposit and across that the kind of soil or the erosional deposits fill out is known as the pill terrace. Similarly, you have cut terrace. Cut terrace takes place along the edges. So along the edges, if there is a kind of steep cutting, it would be a cut terrace. So these are some of the major features of, a, of the fluvial erosional landforms. We would be talking about the depositional landforms formed by the running water in the next class. You can subscribe to exam-based channel for further updates. Have a nice day.